this has been one of those things that's been a long time coming. Uh, I haven't spoke about it yet because you haven't seen me do it. And uh, you haven't seen me do it. You haven't, you, haven't, you haven't heard me speak on it. Haven't been doing it. I don't think I'm the right guy to try and explain this uh, or to try and teach you this. But hopefully I can give like a, a layman's breakdown real quick on explaining how this goes. And then you can use this to redirect yourself to other videos because there are plenty of other channels out there that have covered this and, and they're very good. So uh, now what I'm talking about here is uh, piston to valve clearance. Now, um, this, uh, this has been a topic that uh, it's frustrating me a lot because people want just a fucking generic yes or no and you can't. You can't really give one. Or you kind of, I guess, certain certain says some sense, but not exactly all the time the way people are saying, right? Uh, so I guess the, the, the proper way to say this is, no, you can't give just a generic answer. Uh, but I'm going to give you my take on it. First off, uh, the reason why, uh, the biggest reason why this frustrates me is because it's such a dynamic answer. There is no real right or wrong. Uh, you know, especially when you're talking about doing aftermarket cams, you're talking about aftermarket cams. Each cam has a different amount of lift, right? And also head gaskets also have different amounts of thickness and uh, and pistons also have a different amount of the dome height. And also the kind of rod you're using between steel and aluminum makes difference too. Although I would imagine that most people are using steel, uh, most people here at least. So there's a lot of different things to factor in when you're talking about piston to valve clearance. Um, my general take on it, and I may even be wrong, but I feel very fucking confident that I'm not here. Is that generally speaking, when you're throwing uh, these uh, these big uh, big compression pistons in uh, on, a, on a on a factory camshaft, which uh, you know happens quite a bit actually, um, that I'm not. That's not the biggest fear I'm having. Is worried about piston to valve contact. Um, now, when you got that that big old high compression piston in there with a big old high compression cam or with big old lift cam, that's when you start need to really paying attention to that shit. But even then, it's not just whether you're going to have piston to valve clearance enough just with that cam. But then also you got to consider the fact that those cams aren't just, you don't just drop a cam in place and go. You have to degree the cam. So when you're talking about piston to valve clearance and contact, it's also, it's multiple steps. It's, you got to do the piston to deck height check. You have to inspect that check. Then you have to factor in the head gasket you're going to use. And then you have to degree your cams. And then after the cams, the cams have been degreed, then you go and you check your piston to valve. So see, when people are coming and saying to me, like, hey, will this work? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, you have to know every single little detail, you know? And even if you're getting a, even if you're getting a block for me and you want me to check that, you know, check that measurement for you, that still only gives you one small fraction of the overall equation, right? So that's why I don't even bother looking into that factor right now. The the tools pretty expensive, and of course you know I'm not against buying tools if I need to use them. But this is one of those things where I haven't run into the situation where I need to need to buy that tool to be checking that yet. Because nine out of ten times I'm building a block for somebody, right? And I'm just building the block. I'm not doing the head work. Um, it would it would take for me to be able to properly tell you whether you're going to have issue or not, or whether you can do it. Is that if I were to have the entire engine in front of me, every single thing that's going to go onto it, and then do the measurements like that, All right? Now the oldest, yeah, the oldest, and uh, well, maybe not, maybe you can't really say the oldest, but the simplest method about going away and checking is, and this is the one that everybody should know, is just putting clay on your pistons. You put clay in your in the piston uh, in your piston uh, release, uh, piston valve release, and then you put the head on and you rotate it and you check, and then uh, you take the impression. You make a little cut, or you cut the fucking play-doh in half, and then you measure the, you know, how much the thickness is, and then, you know, with that measure with the, the thickness of your head gasket and yada yada, then you get to tell how much clearance you have between the valve and the piston. Now, uh, now to say what I was saying, almost yet, yeah, almost you can give a yes. And my take on it is, that, you know, me throwing in uh, aftermarket pistons, but with a stock, a stock valve. Um, cam i'm not necessarily too worried about that i think um i think you're going to be good all right of course depending again how many times your head's been milled your blocks been milled all these things <laughs> so um and here being case in point and why i get frustrated sometimes with the old forms is because uh most of these forms i, I guess that every time that something on the internet gets a click generated these uh it makes those things uh 
populate fastest on the search results. So when people are searching for certain things, the key that pops up is the one that's been touched on the most. So if you have a forum that you've dipped into and you haven't scoured that forum and you're just using the Google searches to find that forum, all you're seeing is the one that's been clicked on the most and that information not necessarily is the best. Now, I would almost say that I had a bit of a friendship that kind of went to shit because of a forum. Um, I know I, I know of plenty of cases where people have used CTR pistons and an LS block with a with a, a GSR head, and it's not as a non-issue for piston to valve clearance, right? And I'm I was willing to bet this, you know. I'm like out of my pocket. I'm like, dude, that setup will work, and I will pay for it. Like you're not first off, you weren't paying for this. I'm giving you this block, right? And secondly, if it, if it does cause an issue, I'll cover it. Right? But I feel fairly confident without needing to do all the extra clearance checks and whatnot that this is going to be fine. And I've talked to people later on down the line that had this exact setup and it was a non-issue. Right? Uh, I don't know what happens, but this is why you need to measure case by case. And uh, this is why you should be measuring case by case because not something that happened. You don't, you don't know the circumstances of what happened to somebody else for it to be a failure. Somebody having a, a certain specific piston or a certain specific brand having a failure there and then telling somebody, Hey, this shit fucked up doesn't necessarily mean that everything from that product is a piece of shit. You don't know the exact, the exact scenario, what happened to this guy for him to have a failure and this guy to go out there and repeat to everybody that is fucked up and, you know, and that, that brand to now carry a scarlet letter because of that. Is just is a silly, ridiculous. So, um, in, in in my general rule of thumb, I'm not too concerned about having a piston uh, to a valve clash when you're using a stock camshaft. Uh, if I'm going to use an aftermarket cam, especially like a, an aggressive aftermarket cam, then at that point, I would be really paying attention, you know. And of course, if you want to do everything the right the right way, you should be paying attention all the time. Should be checking. It doesn't really cost you that much time. If you, if it, if you're if it concerns you enough to ask somebody, then you should just check the fucking measurement. Don't rely on what somebody else is going to tell you. If it's a concern, don't take nobody's word for it. Don't take my word for it. Do the measurements. Check it yourself. Measure it, and then you can say, ah. This is not a problem. I'll run it. Or, ah, this is a problem. I need to make an adjustment. And then you can make an adjustment by making a thicker head gasket or whatever you need to do. But, um, you know, uh, it's just, it's a, a lot, a whole bunch of extra tools that go into the, that you're going to need to properly do this. You're going to need a degree wheel. You're going to need the, uh, you're, you're going to need the gauges and you're going to need a deck bridge. These are the things if you want to do, if you want to take the most accurate measurements. This is kind of like the plastic gauge uh, topic I talked to on the other day. Well, plastic gauge will give you a general go, no go. And the uh, same thing with claying will give you a go, no go versus if you want to use all the specific tools to have the most accurate shit. All right. Uh, even like bl engine blueprinting isn't necessarily one specific way or one exact specific measurement. That's why if you go on the internet and you look for engine blueprint paperwork, you're not going to find like one be all end all. Same thing like if you work in a shop, you know, there's uh, there are generic PM sheets, but you're not going to find it. Every, if you work at multiple companies, you're going to find that people's PM sheets tend to differ. All right. Uh, for whatever reason, either time allotments or specific things you need to check. All these things, you know, it's a general, it's just a general rule of thumb what you should go over. And the same thing, you know, is go back to engine blueprinting. Uh, your engine blueprinting, it, it can, it can, there, there are tools out there that you can get very specific in a whole lot of ways versus you can go, uh, versus a more light way for you checking like the, the big checks that you need to make. Uh, so, uh, so even when you're making an engine blueprint sheet, it's, it really can kind of be custom besides generally when I mean, you're checking in play for the rod, checking in play for the crank, I guess you'd be checking that too. Um, and checking uh, bearing oil clearances, piston wall, all these things that go into play. Um, so I, I, again, I guess it just you start in building engines, and then you, you you develop your own methods of doing things the way you do. And then uh, if you have mistakes, then I guess it's one thing that you can do to check it, another thing to add to your list. Uh, me personally, I haven't had any major setbacks or failures, uh, at least, and most of the time, I. I there's only there's only one time where I've had a failure in all the engines I've built, even the ones that made big power. Only one failure where I can't really attribute exactly what happened in that case to cause a failure, uh, other than a, a guess, a couple of guesses. Um, 
is some of you guys are old heads and have maybe heard talk about it before. I had a, a V16 I built a year after it was built and uh, it failed. It spun a bearing. Now, uh, I asked, of course, what was the circumstances, situations, what was going on during during this, the the bearing failure or the for the rod knock to develop and the guy all i got he was like i was nothing i was i wasn't punching or anything i just merged onto you know the highway i was merging onto the highway so i don't know exactly what it, uh, what it is like i said i can guess one the guess would be that you know there's a lie there you know if you watch house he's mentioned a bunch of times that everybody lies right so maybe maybe he's not telling the exact truth um, or maybe something else happened recently within. He's like, oh, well, this happened the other day and that didn't get factored in. Uh, or what I, I'm, if I'm assuming that everything was legit, that, like there's nothing, no complaint here and nothing, nothing happened. There was anything at all. The only, my uh, assumption is that, um, uh, I, there were used rods when I assembled that engine. I don't know how many times that those, uh, bolts have been torqued don't know the history of them they look they, they look good and i guess they were good because they lasted for a year for him running it right uh but that's also the reason why i would like to have constant contact uh with my customers after the fact uh so i can get a trend on things uh so uh, the only thing i can say for that is i don't build with used parts anymore nobody gets a, a part nobody gets an engine blocker ahead for me with used parts at least not fastener wise uh used parts being the only thing you're gonna get used are like valves and valve springs if it's a stock rebuild uh possibly rods um but when it comes to aftermarket stuff there's no aftermarket performance parts that are used they're all going to be brand new performance parts but um i you know i know we diverted a little bit there towards the end but it's just a case in point i wanted to throw out there too but um yeah so it just it, there's there's no real solid answer for this if you want any if you if it bothers you enough for you for you to be asking me then i think now i'm going to say don't be lazy and just clay your fucking pistons and take the measurements there or buy all the tools you need to do the pro do it properly and it's, it's you're going to need somebody to degree your fucking pistons or degree your degree your camshafts you're going to throw a big aggressive cams on there anyway so you don't tangle up your shit you know this is one of those things i touched on also a long time ago where saying you could after you could modify your shit and have a have it run poorly but if you don't do everything that you're supposed to do so hopefully that answers that question and it may not be the answer that you're looking for but there it is and now if people ask me from this from now on this is the this is the answer you're going to get all right guys so thanks for watching social media links are in the description down below i have a couple more videos planned out but um one of them is just more like a personal preachy type uh, type deal and uh i'm going to cover that on the weekend because i don't want to put too much shit like that together you know it's just it's something it was inspired by a comment left on an old video and um i'll give some more tech stuff before getting something like that as personal all right guys uh, again thanks for watching social media links in the description down below and peace